Let's check in with Jenna Leidy. Uh, she is an author and yoga teacher living in Pittsburgh. Her first novel, He Never Liked Cake, tells the story of growing up with her father's traumatic brain injury. And her second book, Yoga for Brain Injury, Move, Feel, Think, a guidebook of 20 postures is available for pre-order on pubslush.com. You can find out uh, find a whole lot of her work about uh, talking about yoga on mindbodygreen.com. Hi, How you doing today, uh, Jana? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing just great. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. So tell us about the event you've got coming up. Um, I have an event coming up that's on Veterans Day, so Tuesday the 11th of November. And it's basically, it's a one hour yoga class at a really cool space in Pittsburgh called The Cloakroom. And there haven't been a lot of events there quite yet and it's not open to the public, but it's a, it's a fun space. So that's what we were trying to do is take it out of a yoga studio, take it out of a gym, take it out of any sort of meeting center and, and make it fun so that it's kind of a little bit of a celebration. Um, a, a chance on Veterans Day to honor veterans, but most importantly, a way to get yoga out into that particular community of people who have um, sort of any kind of challenge that has to do, whether it's a combat injury, whether it has to do just maintaining a happy, normal, healthy lifestyle, because I think that yoga is a really great complement that pretty much anyone can do. And I've done a little bit of work that started with brain injury, but is branching off into PTSD and other forms of trauma to bring yoga to this population. So you're, you're actually working with both the physical and uh, mental and emotional aspects of healing uh, some yes. pretty traumatic things using yoga. Yeah. Um, it started because my father has a traumatic brain injury, and I wanted to see if a yoga practice, a routine practice, basic poses would be able to help him overcome things, different things, but overcome things in the same way this practice has helped me overcome things. And I find that a lot of time people that have a traumatic brain injury or have been through any sort of trauma have sort of the, a, a disconnect or a weakening of the connection of mind and body. Mm. And yoga is all about bringing the two together, mind, body, breath. There's all kinds of the trifecta of things, but really mind and body. And the stronger that connection becomes, the more you're able to live in your present moment and start to make decisions about who you are today and just really get really present, which I think is a great way to begin the process of healing from a trauma, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, um, my father's injury happens to be much more mental than physical. Hmm. So I was very curious to see if this yoga practice could actually help him be less impulsive, be more compassionate, um, make better decisions, things like that. And it did. <laughs> and yeah. so since it did, I thought, okay, let's, let's invite all kinds of other people to try this out. And yeah. how, did, how did it work with your father? How did it work? Yeah. Well, his main, he's a brain injury. So his main, um, deficit if you will is he has problems with executive function which is basically like if your brain were a hard drive and the hard drive crashed you've got all the programs you just can't run them they're not there you can't access them so it makes it very difficult for him to be an adult that has a normal lifestyle in terms of he could balance his own checkbook he could live it live on his own i mean to see him and to talk to him it's fine and you wouldn't really think one way or another but all of these long-term things that we've been challenged with with him for years and some of it too is flat affect so his emotions can be a little off in a nutshell his personality totally changed hmm. and yoga it's such a hard thing to explain in words and even though I'm a writer but it really was able to do a lot more than other treatments be they I, I mean any any sort of treatments medications whatever it was able to do that extra of allowing to him him to understand his injury, allowing him to understand his limitations, allowing him to understand how he can grow away from those limitations and not really fight against them. And I think it, it for him, it broke down to be as simple as you get on your yoga mat and you learn to move very consciously. You learn to move in a way that you know that if you bring your leg back and you step it forward, it's either going to go this far forward or it's kind of not. You're going to have to think your way around that. And the practice that I teach is vinyasa, 
and the actual definition of that is to put or place in a special way. So just this idea of him 30 minutes a day, 40 minutes of the day, pretty basic poses, just taking that time, being in his space with his own body, his own thoughts, his own process, and learning how to move in a, in a special way was able to go off the mat. And he will tell you too, it makes me slow down. And you wouldn't think you'd want to technically slow down, but when he says that, it means he is able to start to think before he talks, think before he acts, understand this idea of cause and effect, of consequence, have things, you know, and then that filters all the way into remorse and compassion because you start to understand how you exist and then how you exist as you do to the world around you. Hmm. Which, like I said, it's such a giant conversation. Yeah. But the movement helped him. Moving helped him more than just sitting and being still because I think when you go through a trauma it's really hard to ask to be asked to just sit and think or sit and clear your mind or sit and think about something positive or sit and imagine it differently because your brain's going crazy and especially those with brain injury where the processes are actually failing Mm. but anyone I mean I have friends who have husbands and I've met people along the way when you come back from overseas whatever goes on over there you don't really want to sit down and think about how to get over it. Yeah. Yeah. So how, so it was it working with your dad that led you to uh, give up your glamorous life of being a writer and become a, a yoga teacher? Um, yes, because I, there was so much pain in, in living so closely with a brain injury and so many other people I had met. And I didn't know a lot of children who had parents, And I just wanted to do my part to somehow help us all heal or cope or understand or just find the positive in this. And I realized that I was doing that with him, that things were just kind of sort of working. And it's funny because it works more. You see it more when he doesn't practice than when he does. But it's like, that's how I see my own yoga practice. When I don't practice, I'm like, oh, man, I got to get back to the mat because such and such and such. It's different for all of us. Right. And that's why I like it so much. It's such a universal concept to practice yoga, but you can make it as personal as you want to. So there really isn't anyone that you can just like to not include from this. But um, I saw positive changes. My mom saw positive changes. He, he just was a little smoother in the way that he lived his life. And at the end of the day, that's kind of just like what we want. Like it's not a challenge all the time, maybe just sometimes. And he was more aware with the challenges, so he would work with them rather than against them. He developed an amazing acceptance and understanding for what happened, even if he couldn't understand what was happening, if that makes sense. And I just thought so many more people could benefit from this. And I, so I started looking at all these yoga books out there, and I'm like, well, where's one where we really get down into personality changes and mental mm-hmm. challenges and behavioral and psychology? And I would be like, oh, yoga for sciatica, yoga to cure cancer. Not cure, but to obviously sure. part of that treatment plan. And it, I found that it was part of a treatment plan for so many things, but not this. And it's kind of like my first book. Well, no one's done it from this perspective. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. So and that shot is at the printer right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's very exciting. As we speak. That's very exciting. So now uh, you have ongoing classes and you work with veterans and people with brain injuries or what all do you, who all do you work with now? Pilot program. So hopefully we'll be able to return to that with something a little bit more, um, more towards the long term. I've done it with a rehabilitation remed in Pittsburgh here. Um, That was an amazing experience. Everyone was kind of blown away by the changes they saw in their clients on quote unquote yoga day, which was Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. They had a sense of purpose. They were disciplined. They wore like an outfit. They did their laundry because there was just something about that that gave back to their life. And it's not my job to figure out how to give it back to them. It's just my job to introduce them to it. Um, I did something with Wounded Warrior Project and oh, yeah. I'm in talks with the VA to maybe bring it into the um, the CB unit. One of their nurse managers wants to start a, a pretty routine yoga class. So we're at the very beginning. That's They've only awesome. been here a year. So. Oh, that's awesome. So I was in New York uh, last July. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, welcome. You're from Pittsburgh originally, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm well, welcome. Really welcome home. Yes. <laughs> and so November 11th, uh, the cloak room in East Liberty, you'll be teaching a yoga class. What, the, what time does it start? 
starts at 5.30, goes till 6.30, and then there'll be some snacks and beverages and a time to chat, ask questions, meet lots of other great teachers who want to go in this direction as well, and just hang out. Like Awesome. And just five uh, bucks or a donation of some uh, sweatpants uh, for the VA. I'm looking for men's sweatpants, medium, large, and extra large. Excellent. I asked what they did most, and that is what they needed most. So that's what I hope to give them. Well, how can people uh, get in touch with you? They can email me at movefeelthink at gmail.com. And um, not not to correct you, but some it's hard to keep up with your bios online. Oh, yeah. The book is no longer on, <laughs> available for pre-order on PubSlush, but it will soon be available for order through my own website, movefeelthink.com. So Move that's, that's all in process. Well, that's awesome. In process, but we all have yoga. That doesn't stop or start. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, God bless you and all your work, and uh, we'll see you on November 11th. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. You bet. Take care.